not through tradition, but from change. Last year's points came, as they always had, from strong option football. But the bone has been broken. Now the ball is in the air, enough to become the fourth most effective passing attack in the land. Still blocking the path to the Orange Bowl is a Kansas barricade, but that roadblock is for another day, as a pair of eighth-ranked road warriors collide here in Lincoln. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. And what a dandy we've got for you this afternoon. The two eighth-ranked teams in the country, the Buffaloes, once tied, and the once-beaten Nebraska Cornhuskers set to do battle. It's trick-or-treat time. Whoever can turn the trick and win this game might find the Orange Bowl to be the treat at the end of the season. But, of course, Kansas will have something to say about that, too. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, along with Gary Danielson. Happy Halloween from Lincoln, Nebraska. Halloween's have been good to Nebraska. They've won 15 of these games, and they've won 23 straight homecoming encounters. If they're to make it number 24 against Colorado, they put it on the shoulders of a freshman quarterback. And that's something for Tom Osborne. I mean, he's supposed to be conservative, but he's going to go with Tommy Frazier, a true freshman to play quarterback. But don't worry here. He's got a good running game to go to. But things happen when you play with freshmen. Look at this versus Missouri last week. First, he fumbles a snap. Remember, he's got 4-5 speed. He can do it with a great arm, but he can do it with his legs. I think he's going to have a good ball game, but he's going to have to avoid turnovers on third down to really get this Nebraska offense going. Well, the Nebraska offense has, has been the case since Bob Devaney's day, 30 years, always running the football. They're leading the country in rushing right now. Colorado, on the other hand, used to do it that way. And boy, what a 360 they've done in a year with their offense. And you wonder why change. I mean, that's the question. But there's some reasons for it. Bill thought McCartney hey, had to have a little bit better offense. And this is the game he's going to have to prove it. He knew he had better wide receivers. And he also knew he had a bowl game to go to this offense. So he had a whole year and an offseason to go to it. And this is the game, though, that he has to show he can do it. He's got a strong defense. But today, they must turn on the offense. All right. The last team to beat Colorado in Big 8 play, you guessed it, Nebraska. ESPN's presentation of CFA College Football is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. By Genie Screwdrive Garage Door Openers, built for a lifetime. And by Desk Jet Printers from Hewlett Packard. Desk Jet Printers, make it happen. College football first here in Lincoln. Never before have two teams been tied in the polls and set to do battle. A couple of eights here today. The polls are closed when this one's over, Gary. <laughs> Pair of eights, but Tom Osborne knows that he still has yet to prove he can win against top ten teams. That man has made his turnaround by playing against Nebraska. A big rivalry for Colorado. Nebraska would dispute that, but here come the Buffalo. The only blemish on their record, a tie with Oklahoma. And for homecoming 1992, here come the Huskers. Five and one for Nebraska. We've talked about their quarterback situation. What we haven't touched on is Colorado. So let's go to the third man of our crew, Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Thank you very much, Brad. Hello, everyone. You know, the big question mark, as you said, at Colorado this year has been at the quarterback position. No, not talent. They certainly have a wealth of that, but injuries to primary starter Cordell Stewart. The sophomore from Louisiana suffered a left midfoot sprain early in the year against Baylor. Then he broke a bone in his left wrist and the victim of bone against Missouri. Now, he was named the starter last Monday by Bill McCartney. Then McCartney reneged and said, no, I'm not sure who the starter would be. And then McCartney closed practice. So the big mystery in Boulder is who would start this game. Will it be the freshman Coy Detmer or possibly the sophomore, often injured, Cordell Stewart? We'll wait and see. Brett? And we'll find out in about 30 seconds because Nebraska won the toss, deferred to the second half, and the second half weather could become a big question mark, as it always is between these two teams. It's not one of your sunny, balmy days. 50 at game time. It'll get worse, and Gary and I have seen some of this rain already almost take the form of snow up here in the press box. 
keep your mind on one thing, that the passing game is affected by the rain, yes, but so is the option game, and Nebraska will need it to win. Byron Bennett has got it teed up for Nebraska. T.J. Cunningham back deep for Colorado. Cunningham slips. Immediately the weather comes into play. A lucky bounce for Colorado. Scott Phillips got it out near the 10-yard line. And here comes Coy Detmer to start at quarterback for Colorado. Let's take a look at the Energizer starting lineups. The McDonald's starting lineups look like this. Coy Detmer, he led the team to wins over Minnesota and Iowa. Lamont Warren joins him in the backfield. Michael Westbrook leads the Big Eight in all-purpose yards. Poirier, Cunningham, and Johnson join him. And Detmer in and out of the hands, and it's intercepted. On the opening play of the game by Travis Hill. A very safe pass coming out to start the game. Detmer throws it slightly high. Thought it should have been caught. Already a turnover, but remember this. Eight, 19 fumbles inside their own territory. They've only given up one field goal, Colorado's defense. Rick Brown, on the first carry, got it to the 14-yard line. Not the way the freshman quarterback wanted to start the game. Nebraska changes up its personnel offensively with a second down and eight coming up the football just inside the Colorado 14-yard line. Their freshman, Tommy Frazier at quarterback. Abdul Muhammad, the man he called to on the right side with an audible. Here comes the pressure. Incomplete intended for Muhammad. Offensively. For Nebraska, Tommy Frazier, the true freshman, is the man at quarterback. Lewis and Brown join him, the wee backs in this tailback-oriented offense. Tyrone Hughes will play both split end and some defensive back today, as well as return kicks and punts. Washington and Hawkins join him. Shields, a 305-pounder, anchors a good offensive front. Brown and Jones are both in there. Third down and eight. And now it's Brown that goes out in a slot to the top of your screen. Frazier under a blitz. Overthrows his intended receiver. Trumaine Bell with a penalty marker down. Offside call on Colorado. That's a gift for the Nebraska offense. Colorado puts the pressure from the outside with their defense. great outside backers. Repeat third down. Well, so instead of third and eight, third and three coming up. There's the numbers, the winningest percentage of any active college football coach, Tom Osborne. And so many nine win seasons or better in a row, it's phenomenal. And here's where Tommy Frazier's so valuable, being able to run the option. He's four, five speed. the wing back in that full house backfield there is the option Frazier has a first down now the defense of Colorado will really have to come to play as it's first and goal Cornhuskers and that defense for Colorado with Leonard Renfro and all big eight performer joining a true freshman Cobell and Elder up front Linebackers, a great core. Wolfork, Beaker leading the team in tackles. Johnson and Brown. And in the secondary, Deion Figures, one of the better cover men in all of college football with Davis Hudson and Bradford. First and goal, Nebraska at the Colorado three-yard line. Trying to take advantage of the turnover, and they do. Touchdown, Calvin Jones.
the oranges are flowing into the end zone. <laughs> this is just power football, Nebraska football. They're going to run it right off their All-American candidate, Will Shields, number 75, their guard. And you can see that line just push Colorado into the end zone. 19 goal and goal plays for Colorado's defense. They've only given up two touchdowns. They've made it on first down. That's power for Nebraska. Byron Bennett in for the point after. Remember that short drive actually started as a Travis Hill interception. And Nebraska about to make it pay off for seven points. 13-46 remaining first quarter. Colorado will get it back when we come back trailing by seven. ESPN's presentation of CFA College Football is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one Jeep. And by Thrifty Car Rental. For worldwide reservations, call 1-800-FOR-CARS. 7-0 Cornhuskers. Tom Osborne wanted a home field advantage that was worth something. He got it early. They're only a minute and 14 seconds into the game and up by seven. Bennett's kick to Cunningham again, who had trouble with the first one and has trouble with this one. So Coy Detmer, whose first pass was intercepted, set to head back out and will work from the 20-yard line. There's Cordell Stewart, number 10. He's taking a look at the play that was called and sent in. It's got to be tough on Cordell Stewart, but don't be surprised if he plays. He hasn't had much practice time. That was the main reason I assume that this switch was made because Coy Dittner had all the practice time this week. Crowd is deafening already. Lamont Orr dropped for a four-yard loss by John Perella. Let's try to give you that Colorado offense again as we take a look at the McDonald's starting lineup. We only had one play to try to do it last time. Detmer, the freshman out of Mission, Texas with Warren, who was just dropped for the loss. Michael Westbrook, one of the top receivers in all of college football. So is Charles Johnson, for that matter. Fourier, the tight end. Cunningham, the flanker. And up front, Jim Hansen, an all-big eight performer with Ivy, Stoltenberg, Moore, and Derek West. Second and long, Detmer has that one go in and out of the hands of Westbrook. And that'll be third down in about 15. If you'd ask me, what are the toughest conditions to catch and throw a football? I'd have to say this is the type of day, a cold rain, where the ball has a little glaze on it, especially early in the game. I think the guys, as they go along, both teams will become more comfortable with the weather. That gives you the idea of what it's like here in Lincoln, Nebraska this afternoon. of Coy Detmer might give you an idea what third and 14 is like. And he's got the first down. Charles Johnson hauls that one in. His timing is so magnificent getting rid of that ball. This ball was thrown about a second before the receiver even broke in. That's timing that just is inherent when running a passing game since you were in ninth grade. His brother did it. Watch when this ball is released. The receiver has just turned around and he's halfway there. That's good coverage. And they made the completion. Will Height right there, but a pickup of 15 on that third and 14. First down, Buffalo. Blitz, Detmer, and he overshot Lamont Warren. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Guys talking about the weather, some of the players in Colorado were saying it reminded them a little bit of the, their trip to Columbia, Missouri, back on October 8th. Remember what happened that night? They did not score a single touchdown. The only time this year they've been shut out of the end zone, they scored six points only for a six to nothing win. It does have that kind of look. We had that game for you here at ESPN. It was a nasty night, but a win nonetheless for Colorado. They've got a four-wide receiver group on second and ten. Detmer will go down. And the ball is loose. And I think he took it right away from him. Perella's got it for Nebraska. We've got a little bit of a conference going here. When people start talking, you never know which way it's going to turn around. Coy Detmer's going to drop back. Perella's going to be the man coming inside. That's what Bill McCartney told us worried him the most. Matchups up front on that offensive line. And you can see that ball comes clean, and that should have been a fumble. 
It's out of there before he hits the turf. Perella would have had the fumble recovery. There's only one thing that could have been called is forward progress, but I think that was a little early. I think that was a fumble. It should be Nebraska's ball. Third and 20, Colorado. The swing pass out. And what a job defensively by White, who made the hit. David White. It'll be fourth down, Buffalo. Mitch Berger to punt. Fourth in the country with that 46.6 average. Corey Dixon and Tyrone Hughes back deep. Nebraska with the other nine men on the line of scrimmage. And here comes the pressure, and they almost got to the kick. Dixon from the 18. Out to the 34-yard line. 16-yard punt return with 11.37 to go. First quarter, Nebraska by seven. You can see right here, Nebraska has overloaded right here. Five people coming from the outside. He comes free, Baron Miles, and he almost gets that ball. A nice return has Nebraska setting up offensively at its own 34-yard line, up seven. And only back to the line of scrimmage goes Derek Brown. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim? You talk about a shocker. South Carolina yields the touchdown, and on a two-point conversion, Schuler hits James Little Man Stewart. They stop him. Georgia could clinch the SEC Eastern Division crown if they win the cocktail party in Jacksonville against Florida. What a win for Sparky Woods. Wow, they should have given it. The players should have given that vote of confidence at the beginning of the year, right? Just take a week or take a day off and you play. <laughs> Second and ten for Nebraska. Now the option. Frazier keeps it out to the 38-yard line. Greg Beaker in on the tackle, and we'll call his name and number a lot this afternoon. Semi-finalist for the Butkus Award, number 19. There he is. Ted Johnson's the inside backer, just a true sophomore playing, but you can see Nebraska's got him labeled. They got two, maybe three guys. That was Scott, who evidently pancaked him, pancaked him at the end of that play. Wow. Third and six. First third down. Second third down situation of the game for Nebraska. And no. Tremaine Bell says he had it. The officials say he trapped it, and Nebraska will have to kick. If you've watched Nebraska football, you've seen that play maybe 500 times. The quarterback sprints out. Both backs kick out the linebacker, and it's an out by the outside receiver, and the slot back runs a little hook, and you have to throw that ball on the run. Mike Stiggy into punt. Two excellent punters. He's second in the country in net average. And Dion Figures back deep. Figures had 164 yards in returns last week to set a Colorado single game record. He lets this one go, and maybe he shouldn't have. David Saez downs it at the two foot line. A 61 yard Stiggy punt. The two officials had a little chat about that one before they decided to spot it down inside the one yard line. Yeah, that was very close. Remember in the college game, you don't have to control, you have to control the ball, but you can slide in the end zone. It's the ball, not your feet. Good point, Gary. Detmer. He got a yard and a half out. Let's take another look at that punt. You can see the ball right here. It stops beautifully for Nebraska right here. I think it would have died right it, but the sliding player gains control, sets it down, down right there at the six-inch line. Now, had that been the pro game, that ball and momentum would have carried forward and would have been first down at the 20. Second and eight. Something Colorado hasn't done well all season long is run the ball, and that's what they're, of course, trying to do to get a little breathing room here. Want to play remaining back for Colorado? This is what it feels like. You're the remaining running back. Go up there, pick out your hole. There isn't any hole. Run into John Perella again. <laughs> 
John Torello was signed in Colorado, offered a scholarship, but then taken away. He came to Nebraska, and he's haunting them so far. Boy, is he ever. Detmer on third down. Deep for Westbrook, and he made the catch. Some people just have a feel for throwing a football, something you just can't teach. Coy Detmer right here on this play is going to roll out. He feels pressure from his backside, but he sees Westbrook. Watch him lay this ball up. He couldn't throw it on the line because Westbrook wasn't open. And watch how beautifully it's thrown. And Westbrook acrobatically makes the catch. And a first down at the 33-yard line. 29-yard pass play. Detmer on what appears to be a broken play. And he improvises his way out near another first down. That's a nifty run for a kid 165 pounds. And the way the Colorado rushing game is going so far, they need whatever yards they can. We're talking about the pass of Coy Detmer earlier and the fact that Cordell Stewart's got such a big gun of an arm. And Bill McCartney says, hey, you know, one guy hits a golf ball 180 yards with an eight iron. Everybody goes, ooh, and ah. And he says, and then somebody else pulls out a five iron, the same shot. What's the difference? It's how many. It's not how you get it there. Second and a yard. But that yard's going the wrong direction. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. A flag flies in late. Trev Alberts made the tackle. It's a holding call against the Buffalo. That's Charlie McBride right there, defensive coordinator for Nebraska. And one of the things that we saw yesterday before this game was the Nebraska linemen and linebackers taping down their jerseys. They said Colorado does a lot of holding. They taped them down. They said if they're going to hold, they better be good at it because we're going to wear the tight shirts. They didn't do a good enough job there. We're caught at it, and the penalty backs it up to the 30-yard line. Second down, 12. Ball is there you see it. You can see they've got double-sided tape to keep those shirts very tight. I've seen it for offensive linemen, but not very often on defense. Coach Moore had that with Michigan today, didn't he? A tight <laughs> shirt. Detmer, deep ball again, and that one skips off the hands of his intended receiver, Charlie Johnson. Intended for nine. And that one floated just a little bit on Coy Detmer, it looked like. A little bit high. The game of this game when you're throwing the football is protection up front. This is a young offensive line. They've had to change from running a wishbone-type offense last year to a passing offense this year. They've done a good job at the pass protection. Some of the guys said it's easier. You see the ball just sails a little bit on Coy Detmer this time. Had his man, but it would have been a lower throw. Third and 12. Westbrook got a little bit tangled up in the secondary with Steve Carmer, and it's incomplete. And Mitch Berger, whose first kick went 52 yards, set to kick it away again. Corey same alignment, oh, excuse me, Brad, same alignment for Nebraska on this rush. And they almost got the last one. Baron Miles was the guy that got close before. Berger will back up Dixon to the 21-yard line. And here comes Dixon again. May have been a saving tackle made by Scott Phillips. Still Nebraska by seven with 7.51 to go in the first. Well, it's been kind of a spooky start for Colorado. As Nebraska is out in front by a touchdown. <laughs> you know, with the uh, validity of the polls right now, that could really talk, turn everything into upside down. Chris is running a close fourth, we understand. <laughs> Nebraska from its own point. <laughs> Through the middle in a hurry for six is Derek Brown as we go in a hurry to Tim Brando. Speaking of being in a hurry, Napoleon Kaufman's always seemingly in a hurry, particularly on punt returns like this one. Stanford was leading 7-0. He set sail 64 yards. That would set up a Brunel to Leif Johnson touchdown pass. It is now a 14-7 game. Brunel scored from a yard out. He said didn't call that click to the 7-0 Nebraska. <laughs> With a second down and three. Short of the first down, Derek Brown. Tackle by 99. 
Colorado's defense coming and returning into this year was the strength of this team. And you're looking at Ted Johnson right there. Their outside backers and their group of backers was named as maybe the best unit in college football. But they need to stop the run inside with the nose tackle. That's the question mark. Third down at two. The toss. Brown trying to get wide, and he won't get there. And that is a great job defensively again by Ted Johnson. The sophomore out of Carlsbad, California, makes the play. Linebackers run, and the inside backers for Colorado run as good as anyone. There you see Johnson. You're going to see Beckett come in also. They just make the play. Ted Johnson, a true sophomore, played a lot as a freshman, makes the play and stops him short of the first down. So Stiggy, who dropped his last punt, thanks to the help of his punting team down at the one yard line set to kick again Deion figures there's what he did last week and that broke a Colorado record all the way back to the 1930s Stiggy line drives this one fair catch called for this one makes the end zone touchback Colorado will work from its own 20 yard line that time a 52 yard Stiggy punt Colorado has only given up seven. Detmer started with the first pass of the ball game being intercepted. That led to that Cornhusker touchdown. In the third quarter, Ted Johnson, who made back-to-back -back tackles on that last series. Now let's see what the Colorado offense can come up with. They have been unable to run the ball at all so far. Play action. Detmer high again. That one almost intercepted after the ricochet in the secondary. Steve Carmer actually had the closest play on the ball. Every pass that Coy Detmer has missed, and even the interception, has been a high throw. That's because he's getting pressure and quick pressure, both from the outside and up the middle, from Perella, and then the outside, Trev Alberts has given him some pressure. So he needs to be able to have room to set up and lower his trigger. Those five interceptions against Oklahoma, part of a seven-turnover day for Colorado, and that's really been part of their problem this year. Incomplete that time, and again, pressure. From Travis Hill, number 93. You're going to see again, it's... Detmer drops back in the pocket. He just doesn't feel comfortable with the timing of these passes. This is only going to be a five-step drop, but you're going to see Alberts come from the outside. Just as he's letting that ball go, he sees a red shirt right in his face, and he's been throwing high. Three out of ten for 53 yards for the freshman, Coy Detmer. And no doubt his 11th throw upcoming unless we see a draw play. Trying to set up the screen, and Detmer face down way back in the end zone. Keneally and Alberts. That's exactly what it was. It was a screen for Lamont Warren, number 12, just didn't turn around. I'm not sure if he knew it was a screen or not. He thought he's doing a good job blocking and everything. <laughs> and the other 10 guys are running a screen here. Out comes Mitch Berger. kick. Corey Dixon back pedals to the 25. And this time Colorado's got him hemmed in. And for his third stop today, Tatasic made that hit. Most comprehensive pregame show on TV. Coming up tomorrow, Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Joe Theismann tell you all you need to know and get ready for a football Sunday. And then at 7 tomorrow night, prime time comes back to give you all the highlights and scores and everything from the day in the NFL. Speaking of the NFL, just a week from tomorrow, ESPN has the Bengals and the Bears set to do battle 8 o'clock Eastern time. It's a week from tomorrow night. Here at 7 nothing, Nebraska with 5.19 to go first quarter. Frazier had it knocked down by Dwayne Davis, a strong safety. 
fans wanted an interference call in the secondary and don't get it. What a play he made, too. Davis closed on that ball, showed his 4-5 speed going after it. It was a bootleg-type action, but he was maybe five yards away from that throw, but just closed with his speed. Dwayne Davis redshirted a year ago. Okay, you're going to see the action. The guard is going to pull one way. Now it comes Frazier. Just as he rips this ball in here, he's got pressure up the middle. Forces a second and ten, Nebraska. They go with a quick draw. Brown hit in the backfield by Beekert. And then Beekert got help from his friends. Beekert is second all-time in tackles for Colorado. And you can see why. He just reads so quickly that guard play in front of him. That's the guy he's looking at. If that guard comes at him, he sidesteps him sometimes and gets into the backfield. Just does a magnificent job. 32 straight starts at that linebacker spot for Colorado. Third and 11, Nebraska. This is the longest third down situation they've had today. Tommy Frazier, straight drop. Incomplete. Tyrone Hughes appeared to slip. Frazier wants an interference call. And it's three and out, Nebraska. This is the type of field when you play bump and run, you worry. Bradford this time has got a man-to-man, -man, a perfect throw would have had him, but I think he just slips and falls down. Bump and run, you know you got pressure coming. Linebackers are coming, inside pressure, but plenty of time to throw that pass. It just looked like he slipped coming out of the route. Third straight, three and out for Nebraska. But Stiggy has helped him with some great punts so far. Figures can draw a beat on this one from the 28-yard line. comes in at the end of the play. Flags all over. Oh. Would normally think illegal block on Colorado. Don Laurie, our referee, will straighten it all out for us momentarily. With 421 left first quarter, that is the call. Every time Colorado tries to get decent field position, something takes him in the other direction. We'll go in the direction of Tim Brando right now. Timmy? I'm going to take you down to the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, Brad. It's Shane Matthews looking for some measure of respect for what has been a down year to Jack Jackson the strike. It's 16 to 7. They missed the point after. Still plenty of time in Jacksonville. First down at Stetmer, and that one almost intercepted again. Carver, diving attempts, couldn't quite come up with it. Now you wonder why would someone make a throw like that? It looked like all there were were red jerseys. What happened was Detmer was fooled on that play. They're running option routes. The receiver and the quarterback have to read the right, see, right thing at the same time. You see the receiver turned in. Detmer thought he was going to turn out. And you see it looked like that ball bounced off the turf. Good call. Leading tackler for Nebraska's Carver. Almost missing the handoff to Warren, and he's ridden out as he crossed the 30-yard line. It'll bring up third down and seven. Brad, you know what these games usually come down to is a team that passes the ball, it's how well they run it in a big game like this. And a team like Nebraska who runs the ball well, how good are they going to be today at throwing the ball? So far, neither team has been able to do their offhand very well. Colorado hasn't been able to run. Nebraska hasn't been able to throw. Third down at six, Buffalo. They're coming after Detmer. Intended for Westbrook. Detmer leveled again, and he's looking at his receiver as if to say, you got to turn quicker. <laughs> Nebraska overloaded their blitz this time. Man to man. Remember, the quarterback can't block anyone. They're going to send in more men than Colorado can pick it up, and that freshman just getting a taste of what it's like to play big-time football. They just brought in six people that time. Colorado only had five blockers with nobody in the backfield. Mitch Berger to punt. 
Tyrone Hughes back at his own 20-yard line. And now they're going to bring 10 people after the Colorado punter. Hope they back off that. Hughes takes it on the run at the 32 and got five or six out of the return. Again, good field position for Nebraska offensively. I talked to Tom Osborne yesterday about his team, the state of his team. He says, you know, we're not throwing as good as we had in the past. We have a solid offensive line, a great running team, but look what kind of record this man has had. That second stat, 23 straight years of winning nine games or more, that's unbelievable. That's the most amazing stat I've heard for a college program. That fits right in there with North Carolina's basketball team on 20 <laughs> win seasons or more. They've got one going very similar. That is remarkable. Brown, he's quick. To the 44-yard line. They got about seven in a hurry. Greg Beekert again helped down on the tackle. No, they call them the wee backs. Derek Brown, and Calvin Jones. They both are, you know, could start for most any team in college football right now. About a week, two weeks ago, they both said, "Hey, choose a guy." You know, we both want to play, have play full time until we get tired. Then they thought about it again. Might be not the guy who couldn't play. <laughs> That's right. You didn't want to be the odd man out of that <laughs> deal. Second down of three. With 3.20 left first quarter, Frazier on the option. And he's got the first down and then so You're going to see the option. The fullback comes in here when Frazier makes the fake. His 4-5 speed really makes it to the outside. But watch one other thing. Corey Dixon's going to come in from the right side. Great block on the free safety right there. That's what really makes the plays go. Nebraska's receivers block as good as anybody I've seen in college football. And a first and 10 for Nebraska. Brown again. And he goes inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Bottom of that pile. By 34, Chad Brown, Chad the Brown linebacker, number 34. Another one that was originally up for the Butkus Award at the beginning of the season. Had it not been for a series of injuries, he might still be on that list. Two years ago, he played inside linebacker when they still had Williams and McGee. Now they moved him to the outside in 91, and this year he's really coming on as a pass rusher. Second and seven. Just inside the Colorado 35-yard line. Nebraska by 7-0 margin and on the option. Frazier again. All the way to the 21. The kids around campus are already starting to call him Smokin' Tommy Frazier. Call it speed. Yes, he's a true freshman, but he played in a big high school program. He is not going to be intimidated by this type of a game. He's played 13 and 15 years uh, games a year. He runs option football, 4-5 speed. And remember, Colorado was looking at this man. He was their number one quarterback recruit until they decided to go with Coy Detmer. Marcellus Elder being helped off the field, injured. He was shaken up earlier and came out and then came back into the Colorado defensive front. Now they're helping him off again. Frazier has runs of 19 and 12 yards on this drive. And Marcellus is looking at somebody who he wants to get back at if he can get back on the field. It'll be first and 10, Nebraska at the Colorado 22. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, and it's been all Nebraska for homecoming so far, especially on the ground. Brown and Jones in that backfield, but Frazier wants to throw. He may take off on his own again. The Buffalo's defense makes him pay for it at the 23-yard line. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim. Steve Stenstrom has now been injured and has left the game Mark Butterfield. But prior to leaving the game, he threw this pick to James Clifford, who returned it for a touchdown. 21-7 now, the Huskies taking control. The Huskies by 14, the Huskers by 7. 123 left, clock winding down first quarter. Colorado's at a tough time with field position today. They've already seen Nebraska pick off Detmer's opening pass. And now Nebraska down nearing that Colorado red zone again. 
Nice play fake by Frazier. And over the middle, incomplete intended for Gerard Armstrong, the tight end. And he take it down to Jerry Punch. Doc? Well, Marcellus Ellis was here off the field earlier. You said up there, Brad, he had a sprained right ankle. They taped the ankle. He went back into play, and now he is trying to run. You watch him on the sidelines. That is trainer David Burton, who was walking along and talking to him. Elder, the senior from California, they desperately need him in that defensive line. Back up there. They need about a box of tape to tape those ankles. 300-pounder out of Long Beach, California. Third down at 12, Nebraska. Frazier had a man open that time and overthrew him. Three of his receivers here to the top of your screen. On the option, he got past Beaker. But he didn't get past Ronnie Bradford out there on the corner, and he made the tackle. It'll bring up fourth down. Fans want Tom Osborne to go for this, and what they'll see is the field goal unit. <laughs> Tom Osborne's been around too long to give up three points yep. at this portion of the game right now. 10 nothing looks awful big. He didn't win 191 games making decisions like this in the first quarter. Well, you just marvel at Frazier's speed on that option. Beaker had, had him labeled, and the angle just wasn't there for him to catch him. He turned in a positive play on him. Byron Bennett, there's what he's done this year. Mike Stiggy, the punter to hold. This is a 32-yard field goal attempt to try to put Nebraska in front, but it's a fake. It's going to be an incomplete pass, even though it looked like a fumble. A shovel pass from the outside wing. I think it was Corey Schlesinger, the back, uh, number two fullback who came across. Pretty well designed, but it hit the turf first. Yeah, there's a go. The wet ball, he put it right there. It was a perfect throw. No, it didn't hit the turf first. It hit his hands first. Right. <laughs> So Colorado maybe gets a break there. They didn't have a defense that well, but Schlesinger didn't hold on, and now the Buffaloes take over at their own 15-yard line. Well, the fans got what they wanted. They didn't get the result they wanted, did they? They are a loud group here on Halloween in Lincoln. Detmer will keep this one. And a tough, hard-earned four yards before Ed Stewart, the weak side linebacker, made the tackle. And that'll bring quarter number one to a close. The Nebraska Cornhuskers by seven after the first 15 minutes. Amazingly enough, that group dresses the same way when it's not Halloween. <laughs> To start the second quarter, Colorado trying desperately to run the football, and Lamont Warren got it out near the 22-yard line where Trev Albert made the tackle. There's what Nebraska has done in the first quarter this season. A 7-0 margin after 15 minutes in this one, and 72-2 in first quarters this year. And that two was a safety given up in their loss to Washington. Third down and three. Detmer with a little option, and that only option for Warren is to go down way back at the 15-yard line. Ed Stewart and Trev Alberts again. The difference in this football game so far has been Nebraska's speed on defense. They've gone to their dime package. Ed Stewart right there is a linebacker, but he's six foot 205. He was a backup defensive uh, back last year, so they really have six defensive backs on the field, and they seem to be overwhelming Colorado with their speed right now. Mitch Berger's been a busy putter. Ten men up for Nebraska again. Tyrone Hughes at the 42. Hughes got outside. Turn, and Nebraska will be in Colorado territory to start their offensive series. Let's go to Tim Brando. Brad, Steve Spurrier's mastery over the dogs in Jacksonville seemingly is going to continue. Shane Matthews this time to Willie Jackson. It's 23 to 7 Gators. Garrison Hurst not out of the gates as yet. 
Maybe the Gators aren't out of that side of the SEC either with that kind of lead and Tennessee having lost earlier to South Carolina. Here are the big eight, seven nothing Nebraska at the Buffalo 47 yard line. Calvin Jones. Jones, he's gonna go. Touchdown. the competition 47 yards touchdown Nebraska you put in your backup and he runs his first play for 47 yards but this is just not your ordinary backup this is a man who can really run the fastest player on the team in a hundred yard dash Tom Osborne told us and you could see it right there when he get in the secondary he only had to go half that far that time and again the oranges flying down in the end zone will temporarily halt the extra point attempt Jones first rush a three yard touchdown a second rush a 47 yard touchdown that two for 50 and two will look pretty good in the stats. Byron Beck into attempt the point after. It's not like he hasn't done it before. He averaged 8.3 yards as a freshman last year. Bennett we got it up and through. Colorado may be lucky they're a passing team because they find themselves in a two touchdown hole early in the second quarter. Want a break? Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Dr. Jerry Punch in Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Cornhuskers lead by two touchdowns with 13 26 remaining in the first half. Byron Bennett to kick. So far, T.J. Cunningham back deep has had a hard time holding out of the football on kick returns. He's got this one at the five-yard line and then lost the handle. Dwayne Harris on special teams made the stop. Penalty marker down as we take another look at the touchdown here. Brad, this is counter Trey. Inside, they're coming this way, step for a touchdown. But the key is the blocking by the wide receiver, Muhammad, and the tight end is going to get both of the safeties from Colorado. That's what plays the, makes the play go. First, the wide receiver with the block, and then downfield, Gerald Armstrong frees him, and Jones is gone. And the only thing he really does wrong right here is right about at the goal line, he's going to drop the ball. And I'm not sure how close. He was so in a hurry to get his helmet off. <laughs> One more look from this angle. You're going to see that ball goes out Whoa. really before he crosses the goal line. But we did get to see his face, which is good. You know? <laughs> and now we find out about the penalty. Or lack of penalty. One call of the 11 yard line. First down. Trailing by two touchdowns with a three wide receiver group to the right of Detmer. And he almost had it intercepted. Again, Carver came flying in there from the secondary on a pass intended for Mitchell. Well, Detmer better keep his eye on number 31. Carver's had his hands on those passes about three times today. And Floyd Detmer has missed eight straight passes. Second and ten, Buffalo. For Westbrook. That one is intercepted by Carmen. Carmen is just sitting back as a free safety this time, reading Detmer's eyes. Detmer's going to look right the whole time, and that's what brings the free safety to the side to make the play. He thinks he has Westbrook man on man, but he forgot about the free safety in the middle of the field. You can see it. He's just laying it up. He thinks he's got his best player one on one, but he forgot to get that free safety out of the way. Second interception of the year for Carter. And right back to the ground, Dan go the court. Oscars is Lance Lewis, the fullback, takes it straight ahead for a couple.
Will Bill McCartney make a change? The thing I, I question here is how healthy is Cordell Stewart? If he's healthy enough, and if he does make a change, it'll be at halftime, similar to the way he did against Iowa when he brought Detmer off the bench. Second down and eight. Nebraska already up by two touchdowns with 12.30 to go second quarter. On the option, Frazier to Jones. Finally, Jones touches it without going to the end zone as we get out of Jerry Punch, Jerry. Guys, the lose doesn't get much better for the Colorado Buffalo. Starting freshman flanker T.J. Cunningham also tries to return kickoff. Sprain left knee, a mild sprain of the medial collateral ligament. That's the inside of the left knee. They're going to tape him up see if he can go. They need him desperately. They think he can go back in the ballgame. But right now, he's hobbled with that left knee back up there. He had a mouthful there, Jerry. Tries to return kickoffs. His ego might be a little bit sprained right now, too. Everything going well for Nebraska. Third down at four. Jones has got the first down to the 22-yard line. Deion Figures made the tackle. Jones well on his way to a 100-yard day. You know, Jones is going to gain yards if this offensive line is still going to be able to all day get in the face of these inside backers, Beaker and Johnson, and just push back. One of the things that we marveled at by watching the offensive line for Nebraska in film is how they just keep blocking until the whistle blows. That's what you try to teach your linemen, not to just make a block and turn around and look, but keep blocking until you hear the whistle, and they really do it. 58 yards on four carries for Jones behind that front wall of the Cornhuskers. And a first down at the 22. Here he is again to the 19. Jones splashed on the scene last year with a 294-yard, six-touchdown day against Kansas. And it worked for Marshall Fox, 386 yards as a freshman against Pacific last year. That would have been about the best you can do as a first-year guy. And the key thing is that they're keeping both of them fresh. I right. mean, they, they, they're very similar in their styles. Jones may be a little stronger and Brown a little more of the moves, but both of them are fresh the whole game. Remember, Brown played the majority of the first quarter. This time, Jones is wrapped up by Beekert, and Beekert has the ball, too, but they're going to whistle that one dead. One of the big question marks you have when you go to a passing offense like Colorado has this year is how you will hold up against a running offense when you play them because in spring practice and in practice every day, you just get passing and passing and passing, and you don't see this type of a power game. And then when you get in the game, it's a little different tempo. And Right now, it looks like Nebraska's taking advantage of that. The rushing yards for Nebraska, 134. And last year in the entire game, Colorado held the Cornhuskers to 112. Third down, a long five. Frazier on the options, got the corner. He is close, he's in, there's a flag down. Penalty marker down. You just have to wonder about that because Frazier's gonna score, but the wide receiver's down there holding to make sure he does. No doubt about it, he was holding right at the end of the play, and that's going to run it back. There's the call Gary's talking about. And that negates smoking Tommy Frazier's <laughs> would-be touchdown run. Kid just, doesn't look like he's running that fast, but he just runs by everybody. We did the Florida State game and watched Charlie Ward run like this against Georgia Tech, but I think Frazier's quicker right now. He just turns it up, and as an option quarterback, he's just invaluable because he's got a rocket arm also. You're going to see it on the left side of your screen. The wide receiver grab him. I think it's Bell, number 80, that grabs Deion Figures. And that's, I, well, actually it was Ronnie Bradford that he grabbed to get in for the touchdown. And that was a clear call. Put but Bradford's it, right arm. It's going to be from the point of the foul, though. It's going to make a third and short still. No, you can't talk your way out of that one. We <laughs> saw it. We have it on TV. It's going to be on home videos, too. Hey, Bell wearing that number 80. Trying to emulate Jerry Rice, he says. Jerry can get caught holding once in a while, too. Now back to Derek Brown time. And Brown takes it near the 10. I think That's the, a first down. I really think the story of this football game so far has been field position. But the reason for the poor field position 
is that Colorado has not been able to run the ball, and Nebraska has. They continue to run it. This is power game. You watch Nebraska for the last 20 years. They've been able to run this isolation play with two backs, and they're having great success so far in this football game. That number 21 looks like another 21 that played a few years ago. And Roger Craig high-stepping it for a first down. And there is that field position that Gary was talking about. It's been horrible for Colorado, good for Nebraska. And a first down at the 10-yard line and another penalty marker down. And that stops the clock. 9.56 remaining first half, 14-0 Cornhuskers. And another holding call against Nebraska. With a penalty being walked off, we're going to walk it back to Tim Brando. Tim? Georgia's offense finally coming alive. Hastings has used no more than a decoy here as a safety valve. Zaire looks him off and then finds Hassan Graham. 13-yard strike, 23-14 at the cocktail party. Under 10 minutes here, Nebraska out in front, two touchdowns. First and 19 coming up after the holding call. Backs the line of scrimmage to the 19-yard line. Colorado with a blitz. And the inside handoff to Derek Brown. Chad Brown made the tackle at the 17-yard line. You know, kind of interesting right there. Our shot on television had a pretty tight shot of that offense, but you really had the Colorado's whole defense in the picture because there was no one... None of their defensive backs were more than five yards deep. To stop that running game, they have moved their defensive backs up considerably. And what you're going to see pretty soon is some, another play-action type pass to get them deep. Which will put pressure on the quarterbacks for Bill McCartney's defense. If those safeties keep edging their way up there to try to help against the run. Two tight ends set again for Nebraska on second and 17. There's the play-action. There comes the pass. Overshot and a penalty marker in the end zone. Dion Figures was out there with Tyrone Hughes. And that's really the problem, Brad, of playing bump and run pass coverage on a play action type pass. If you're going to put people in, you better get to the quarterback quickly because it seems like an eternity to be covering someone in a bump and run when he runs from his own. 18-yard line into the end zone. Doesn't seem like a long time when you're watching it, but try covering a guy that runs 4-5. or five. Looked to me like a slip, but I'm not sure if we caught the whole play right there at the beginning of it when he grabbed him. It figures is one of the better cover men you'll find, but remember, we're on a wet surface. You see him in the top part of your screen right there. He's got him a long time, a little bit of a fake, but I think he grabs his jersey a little bit, and it's too bad because I think that ball would have been thrown out of bounds and uncatchable. two-yard line. You know, you can really see the game evolve from up here. You just saw those safeties coming up, coming up, coming up, and you just knew that Nebraska was going to go to a play-action pass and test them to see if they were there. Calvin Jones has already scored the two Nebraska touchdowns. First and goal at the two. Calvin Jones close to the goal line. It'll be second down. Ted Johnson and Deion Figures and a host of others for the Buffaloes make the hit. It's been an offensive line game for Nebraska so far. They've been pushing around the Colorado defense and giving room for these big Nebraska backs to hit it up in there. That's a lot of yards when you start it out first and goal. Second and goal with 8-10 left first half. Frazier himself. Didn't get there. Went airborne and was met by Ted Johnson. Well, a goal line stand would be exactly what Colorado needs here. Tough to run a quarterback sneak, I think, from this type of position and jump up because those two linebackers are going to time it out so well. Beaker and Johnson just get them. I'd rather give it to that tailback and let him jump over. I don't know. Maybe that's just a passer. <laughs> Third and goal, Nebraska. Jones, and he goes down too. Ron Wolf 
foot with his first big play of the day. He's a big play guy, and he showed it on a third and goal. Yeah, 6'4", 235, outside linebacker is just going to come around practically untouched from the outside, slashes in. you got to believe that the tight end should have blocked down that time. He blocked out on the defensive back, and that's a busted assignment by the tight end there, William Washington. Byron Bennett in the kicking unit coming on for Nebraska. You heard a few spattering of boos again. Remember, the other field goal attempt was a fake. And this one's going to be basically an extra point attempt for Bennett. Trying to add to a 14 to nothing lead. And do we have a penalty down? Penalty marker down? Or possibly a clock problem? We'll find out in just a moment. <laughs> one of the two. I, I think you got to send them back. It's right a delay here. game sure. here, and they're going to. Send them back. Colorado accepts, takes him out, and now it's no longer an extra point attempt, if you will. Or rather, a field goal of close to 24 yards. Nebraska really had a busted assignment on that play for a touchdown. And that, you wonder, you know, when you get down to the goal line, how you can make a mistake like that. Byron Bennett from 24 yards out. And he's got it right through the middle. Six minutes and 31 seconds till halftime. The Colorado Buffalo is in a little bit of trouble here in Lincoln. We've had Old Blaze for 16 years. I mean this old. ESPN's presentation of CFA College Football is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, it's like buying time. 6.31, our time left. First half, 17 to nothing, Cornhuskers. Bennett to kick, a new man back deep. Eric Mitchell in there now with Cunningham out with the injury. And it's Mitchell from the four. And still, they have a hard time getting out to the 20-yard line. The Colorado offense, again, has to work inside its own 20. Time right now for our... ESPN student of the game. Jim Scott, the center, a senior from Ansley, Nebraska, business administration major. He'll graduate in December with a 3-2 plus. He's an academic all Big 8 honor roll member. And there he is. And he's a good one, too. Our congratulations to him. From the 19-yard line, Colorado down by 17 points. Detmer got it out to the 31 of the first down. Eric Mitchell. You can see Colorado's going to go to a no-huddle offense. They had no backs that time. They haven't been able to run the ball. They might as well put in five receivers. they got a tight end and four receivers on the field right now. Detmer's been banged around and intercepted, but he hasn't lost his points. For a kid 19, that's not bad. They're coming after him again. And he got this one completed across the 35. Ray Carruth, another freshman, made the catch. Mike Anderson, another stop. I'll tell you, Colorado has just not been able to handle Trev Alberts, number 34. He led the team a year ago in sacks, and he is putting pressure over the left side, the blind side to Detmer. Derek West, the left tackle over there, and he's got his hands full. Again, they throw that little screen, if you will, intended for Ray Carruth. This one's incomplete. It would have been a first down, I think. Morella's down there complaining about being held again. I think that was part of the game plan, to start early complaining about holding. It's like a guy guarding you basketball. You start working the officials early, you're going to get a call. If you're going to hold Perella, you better have big hands. Third and five. Boy, Detmer's number is not impressive. Penalty marker down. Detmer went down. There's a marker in the secondary and one in the backfield. Yeah, you're going to get both this time. You're going to get pass interference and roughing the passer tacked on top of it that time. I don't think you're going to ruffle Coy Detmer. He's got a lot of his brother in him. And the more you try to hit him, the more he gets into the game. I really believe it. He's got the, the makeup and moxie of a quarterback, and he was born with it. You remember Ty Detmer's games where one shoulder would go separated and then another <laughs> one and then a cut on the chin, and he just kept getting back up. 
We talked to Bill McCartney yeah, about that fouls, yesterday. Pass interference, and pass interference, which will be a spot foul. Personal foul, roughing the passers. The penalty will be accepted. 15 yards and a first down. He talked with us about the Oklahoma game and the fact that the Sooners really just try to take Detmer's head off in that one. Well, really, when you start a young quarterback, that's what you try to do, a passing quarterback. You figure you can intimidate him, especially a guy that only weighs 165 pounds. But I don't think he heard of that word before. He just needs more protection from the outside. His two tackles are just not handling the stunts, and the pressure is coming from the two outside backers, Kill and Alberts. Nebraska really only has two down linemen in the game. They're going with a dime package. Colorado with the ball just shaded on the Nebraska side of midfield. Detmer in trouble again. Ely is there, and so is Alberts again. Nebraska's base defense is a 5-2. They're really now in a 2-3 defense. You see Hill, number 93, and Alberts is going to clean up. The pressure is coming from the outside. The quickness of the linebackers on the tackles. Second down and 13. Detmer delivers this one to Westbrook. Westbrook's got it. Still not a first down, but he got it to the 43-yard line. And that's, well, this entire drive, once they cross midfield, is the deepest penetration they've had against Nebraska today. You really have to marvel at his timing, though. Again, that ball was halfway there before Westbrook turned around. It was decent coverage in the secondary. Now here's a more manageable third and five after that pass completion. And they've got the first down. He zips that one out to the 34, Ray Carruth, the freshman from Sacramento, California, made the catch and tiptoed out of bounds with 4.41 left in the half. Nebraska's defense is playing off and laying off, and I think that's playing right into Colorado's hands. They can't protect very well, so they have to throw early, and the hitches are going to start to add up. First down, Buffalo is at the Cornhuskers, 34. That pass behind the intended receiver, Carruth again. But Caruth is just a true freshman also, and I think he busted that route because that was a surprise throw right there, and that's why he was late with it. Bill McCartney told us that this kid is something special. He's going to be a great receiver before he leaves Colorado. Had his best game last week. Five catches, 67 yards, and a touchdown. And the route over Kansas State, 54-7. to There he is as he trots out to the top of your screen. Second and ten. Detmer hit as he threw, got it complete to the 20-yard line, Charles Johnson. And a first down. Well, I'll tell you, there are guys coming in his face. I'm standing up here, and you really have to marvel at his timing of throws with guys coming right at him. You see to the outside, it's man-to-man -man out of here. This guy on this one, this one on that one, but the pressure inside is what's really making the difference in this game. This ball is delivered to the outside and boom, right on the numbers. Good execution. I tell you what, after holding Nebraska to a field goal down on the other end, and if they should take it in and score in this direction, this would be about a 10-point swing for Colorado, even though they still trail on the scoreboard. And with 4-12 left, Boy, Detmer wants to talk it over at a timeout. Buffaloes, they trail Nebraska 17 to nothing. I'm Chris Berman. Join us Sunday at noon Eastern time for ESPN's NFL Game Day. We'll talk the other great Barry running back, Barry Foster, the Steelers, the unknown Dallas Cowboy defense, and the science of talking tough. We'll talk tough on Sunday. With Gary Danielson and Dr. Jerry Punch, Brad Nessler with you in Lincoln, Nebraska, where it's the Cornhuskers by 17, but Colorado has taken it six plays and 61 yards, first and 10. At the Cornhusker 20. Detmer with more time this time, but incomplete intended for Johnson again. John Reese was over there covering. Colorado was, the uh, Colorado coach is impressed with this young man, number six, Reese, the junior out of Houston. Yeah, he played as a true freshman here in 1989, but lost a whole year in 1990 with me. But he's come back, he's got his speed back, and Bill McCartney told us that he can really cover. Second down at 10. Still plenty of time. There's what the drive has done so far. It's taken only two and a half minutes to go from their own 19 to the Nebraska 20. Quick rhythm pass again and complete. Westbrook, great stop at the 12. 
You talk about putting the brakes on. How about Westbrook stopping before the sideline, and he's got a first and goal at the three. You can't believe how tough of a throw this is. To get rid of this ball, you throw it about 25 yards, and it's thrown with timing. As soon as Westbrook turned around, that ball was in his stomach like a handoff, and Westbrook is just so good after he catches the ball. He turns around, boom, that ball is right there in his stomach. He almost looked like he's going to go out of bounds, but turns it up. It's a huge drive. Westbrook with that catch, the single season receiving leader as far as number of receptions. And on the ground, Colorado scores. James Hill for the touchdown. An impressive Colorado drive in the first time they've been on the board today. Yeah, a little surprise with Nebraska that time. They stayed with their dime defense there on the three-yard line, and Nebraska ran right at the little man over the, ta over the defensive uh, tackle area. 81-yard march. Berger in for the point after. Colorado finally on the board with 3.34 left. And Coy Detmer engineered quite a drive for Colorado. Absolutely coming off an interception. You're going to see if they're going to run it right at him this time. It's called a George block. Down, down, and the guard kicks out. And with this weak spot in the defense with the dime package, they took it right at the weakness. Hill only averaged about two yards a carry per uh, two yards per carry last week, but had a couple of touchdowns, and he's got one here today. He's the one that finished it off, but Gary, you can't say enough about the freshman Detmer on that drive. Yeah, six for nine, 62 yards, but he was in control the whole way. He came up, remember he started with a no huddle. He caught Nebraska a little off balance. They had pretty good pressure on him too, but his accuracy of his throws are what paid off. So Colorado with 3.34 left in the half, set to kick away, trailing now by 10. The conditions, by the way, if you can't tell by watching the game, certainly haven't improved and, in fact, have deteriorated a little bit, and the wind has switched around a bit as well. Sold out Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, 187 straight sellouts. The place is packed and has been since a couple of hours before game time. It is homecoming. And Nebraska's won 23 in a row at homecoming. This will be Corey Dixon at the five-yard line. And Dixon up to about the 22. One more look at the touchdown right here. You see, this is still a nickel, and this is defensive back, and that's where they're going to run the ball. They're going to block, block, and kick out right into the weakness of the defense. The guard comes out, kicks out, and you've got a defensive back trying to make a tackle on a running back near the goal line. Very surprised Nebraska didn't go back to their 5-2 look. Hill's third touchdown of the season, by the way, that three-yard dive. And now Nebraska with a first down on its own 22. The counter. Broke one tackle, but he couldn't get away from Beaker. Beaker will put some tackles on you. Gary mentioned it earlier. Came in with 383 career stops. Last year, he scored two points on a blocked extra point attempt by Nebraska. So he was part of that 1919 tie a year ago. Second and 12. Cornhuskers from the 20. Two tight ends set. Brazier on play action. Plenty of time to throw, but he still one hopped it, intended for Tyrone Hughes. Talking about the weather, let's see what it's down, what it's like down on the field with Jerry. Guys, when the game began, it was about 40 degrees here and just a light mist. Now the mist has gotten much heavier. It's almost a steady drizzle. It can't be more than about 35 degrees, and the wind has shifted directions. Now it's out of the east at about 12 to 15 miles an hour. Folks, it's getting worse down here on the field, back up there. I tell you what, got the glove and everything. He's got a good look, the Michael Jackson look right there. <laughs> Jerry Michael Jackson punch. <laughs> the doctor. Third down <laughs> at 12. 
Nebraska three out of seven on their third down conversions today. They'll try to option for it. Colorado's defense stops them this time. Dwayne Davis and Ted Johnson bring down Calvin Jones. Colorado has made an adjustment. They have moved their strong safety, Dwayne Davis, right there, number 21, up in the playing field. It's really an eight-man front now, and they're making that option string out a little wider. The only time it's really worked the option play is when he's kept it, and that time the linebackers were on the play, stopping Tommy Frazier. Deion Figures hasn't been able to get loose yet today as a punt returner, but he's second in the Big Eight at almost 12 yards a return, so keep him in mind on this kick. Good kick by Stiggy again. Way back to the 32. Figures got about his average out of it. Brought it back to the 43-yard line. 51-yard kick and a 13-yard return. At halftime, we'll have updates on the Cardinal and the Huskies. Georgia and Florida with that big party going on in Jacksonville and the Penn State Blues. Tim Brando and the gang will bring you all that coming up in about... Uh, a minute and 49 seconds. Colorado's got it back on offense. Trailing by 10. Detmer has it knocked away. Hill has got it. Usually a quarterback is bothered by pressure up the middle. It has been from the outside. It's been coming from Travis Hill, number 93, and Trev Elberts. This time it's Hill, the bottom of your screen. Watch as Detmer moves up in the pocket. Hill's going to pick his pocket. <laughs> Takes it right away from him. And if Detmer doesn't make this tackle right here, that's going to be six points. You wonder why Travis Hill's up for the Butkus Award. Try an interception and a fumble recovery already today for number 93. It sets his offense up at the Colorado 27. Jones on the counter again. Breaks back in the middle and got it to the 22-yard line. You called it right, Brad. It's the same play that he scored on before. Two tight ends run the counter tray. This time it's pushed from the outside. He has to cut up. He's going to take one step to his right and then follow those big guys. Gashes it up the middle and almost gets through for another big touchdown run. Boyd Detmer hoping for another chance before halftime. Doesn't look like a possibility right now. It's just over a minute to go in the quarter as Jones has dropped it to 21. Greg Beekert again. It'll bring up a third down situation. And a timeout, Nebraska. With 103 left in the half, we'll take a break as well. 17-7, Cornhuskers in front of the Buffaloes. 63 seconds from halftime. Nebraska by 10. And a third down at four for the Cornhuskers. Eight man front. It doesn't pay off. Will Shields has got the football. <laughs> the old fumble rooski on that play. You could have a 10-man or 11-man front on that play because nobody expected Wheel Shields to get the ball. I was going to call that play. Yeah, right, I bet you were. <laughs> they just lay it on the ground, and the big right guard is going to pick it up. You see it steadying on the ground. Shields picks it up right in the middle of your screen. He's not 4-5. He's not 4-6. But he's, he's 3-0-5. That's right. <laughs> it's first and goal at the six-yard line. On the option, Frazier keeps it. Near the three, Ted Johnson holding out of that leg. Boy, those are the plays you just never prepare for. Well, I don't mean just as a defensive player. <laughs> no. If you're willing to take that gamble on offense, and that's really the second one that Tom Osborne has done in this football game. Remember the fake field goal right. earlier? That's right. And that <laughs> Will Shields has this little smile on his smirk on his face. He probably had it breaking the huddle that time, too. What a great football player he is. First player from the state of Oklahoma ever to play for Nebraska. Two-time yeah. All-Big 8 player. Yeah, and he was All-Big 8 as a true sophomore. The first time that's been done here, too. Somebody asked Bill McCartney during the offseason who he would start a program with in the Big 8 when they got together for their Big 8 conference. He picked this guy. Well, yeah, I wonder if he meant as a running back <laughs> or a guard. No, 
candidate for the Lombardi Award, picks up a gigantic first down for Nebraska with 30 seconds left. Second and goal at the three, and Tim and the gang coming along at halftime with updates on those games and all the finals from earlier today. They'll also keep you posted on what's going on with the Kansas Jayhawks, who are in first place in the Big Eight with a perfect 3-0 mark. These two clubs trying to get near the Orange Bowl right now. Nebraska just trying to get in the Colorado end zone again. Frazier keeps it. Inside the two, Ron Woolfork and Ronnie Bradford stopped him. Clock ticking down to 15 seconds. They'll go without a huddle. Down to 10 seconds. Frazier, Jones, airborne, didn't get there. Flag down. Four seconds left with a penalty marker down. And now where was the movement on the defensive side of things or on offense? I don't know if it's going to make much difference because on this play with four seconds to go, you have to believe Nebraska is going to take the three points and go for the field goal. It is against the defense. You want to talk decision time. The line of scrimmage was the one. This would put it at the 18-inch line or somewhere in that ballpark. Right. It's third down here, but in reality, it's fourth down because you only have time for one more play. Right. Nebraska has a timeout. I wouldn't be surprised if they took it right here. Offside on the defense. Timeout. Offense. Time to talk it over. As Gary said, it's only one play no matter what happens. So now Frazier can talk it over with Tom Osborne on the sideline. And they are definitely. Nebraska's going to try to go over the top on the previous play, but he's just hit at the top of his jump and driven backwards. You can see it right here one more time. Comes to the outside and over the top, you see those linebackers just jump high enough to push him back. He tries to run out of it, but I assume the whistle had blown. You're going to see one more look at the fumble Ruski play right here. The snap to the quarterback, and he's just going to start, start out like an option. The ball set on the turf, and then Will Shields, number 75, picks it up, frees it right there. That's him right here. Big guard, 305 pounds. He's got the football. The option is taking place over here, and everybody's turning their heads, and he has the football going down, driving through it. I'd like to be a DB coming up on that tail. <laughs> Forget it. Nebraska, the top rushing team in the country, coming in, showing why. They're going to go for it. One play till halftime. Will it be a defensive stop for Colorado or another Nebraska touchdown? We're about to find out. Jones. He's in. and three touchdowns for Calvin Jones in the first half. And it's a play that Nebraska puts in first. Isolation play, two backers coming to the left side. This time they don't blow an assignment, and you can see he gets it into the end zone for a touchdown. And the point after by Byron Bennett will make it 24-7 to for Husker. And that's a coach that's going to have to be happy heading to the locker room with what appears to be a 17-point advantage. Again, that touchdown went to the left side. And, Brad, the left side of that line, Lundberg, Malin, and Scott all played eight-man high school football. Two of them were walk-ons, and they were the ones they chose to run this ball to the left side for the touchdown. And how do you feel as a coach when you make that call, a gutsy call, in the final stages of the half? Ah, it's just another day at the office. <laughs> he was very calm yesterday when we visited with him. 
He said, we've got a great rushing football team, good backs, and Tommy Frazier adds another dimension to the football team that I haven't had with a speed quarterback in a while. And all the great linemen that Nebraska's had over the years, the Remingtons and the Stein Coolers and that group, and, and Tom Osborne thinks as a group, maybe this is the best front wall he's ever had. That's saying a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, you got to believe that. Dude. This is a team that's just been a rushing powerhouse for the last 20 years. One second left, so you would assume that Byron Bennett's going to squib one downfield here. And Tommy Frazier, the true freshman, making only his second start in that red uniform, and he's done a nice job today. But again, as Gary said in our open, when you've got running backs in an offensive line like he has, as long as you don't make many mistakes, you've helped the cause. Yeah, he hasn't done it really throwing, but his speed has really been something to watch in this game. Expect this one to be a line drive. Goes directly to one of the up men, Scott Phillips. He takes it to the 34-yard line of the first half has come to a close. Nebraska at homecoming. And they've got the big lead on Colorado. It's turning into the kind of day where you'd like to light a fire in the living room and sit back, I guess, if you're in Nebraska and watch the Cornhuskers roll. That's what they've done so far, Gary, 24 to 7. They're doing what they do well, running the ball. I guess Colorado's doing all right with their air game, but they haven't got any kind of ground game going, and Detmer's paying the price yeah, for that. It's really been the problem of their game so far on offense is they've been able to run the ball no way. They haven't been able to gain anything. In fact, their longest gain has been by Detmer on a quarterback draw, and that means Nebraska has put pressure. It's been coming from the outside outside from Trev Alberts and Hill. This is just an example. Both guys coming around the corner. Nebraska's gone with a dime defense the whole time, and it's really been tough on the Colorado pass protection. Even tougher when you're down 24 to 7, and you've got to give it to Nebraska to start the third quarter. Berger to kick. Dixon and Hughes. Back deep for Nebraska, and they're going to try it again. That shows you the conditions we have. Remember, when the game started, it was about 50 degrees, a light rain, a very light mist, and a little bit of wind. And now we've got more wind swirling around Memorial Stadium. The rain has intensified since early in the first quarter. And if I'm standing up there, I want to make sure I can grab that railing if I have to. <laughs> Either that or you better be a good ice skater because it's getting cold, and we really could have it really slippery up there. You and I are out of those blazers and into the leather jackets. We'll let everybody know that. <laughs> Here's the kick. And trouble handling it. Hughes touched it, and Dixon will touch it down as we go down and talk to Jerry Punch. Doc? Guys, at halftime, I spoke with Colorado coach Bill McCartney, who told me they were going to go into the locker room and try to convince Coy Detmer that those interceptions were not his fault. They were basically blown assignments up front of the blockers and poor pass routes. He said, also, we know with our offense, we can score a lot of points in a hurry. Our job is to convince our kids so they know it in the second half. Back up there. We'll find out if they can convince them. Right now, the Colorado defense on the field facing Nebraska first and 20 from its own 20. A first and 10 from its own 20. And just about the way they ended the first half, they start the second half. And that's with Derek Brown for a good gain on the ground. And the ground game of Nebraska, look at that difference. 180 to minus 7. Yeah, Tommy Frazier was 0 for 7 in the first half, but his option play got him through it. And for Nebraska, when you have a minus in the rushing column on defense, you're feeling good as a defensive unit. That's incredible. Frazier without a completion and still a 24 to 7 lead. Second down along two. It'll be close for Derek Brown. This has really been the key. I mean, it's just been choose any way you want to run this game so far. They've had equal success running it both ways. That inside left was really that big play that they had for a touchdown when Jones cracked the play and he had great blocking downfield. But, you know, they really haven't had a weakness anywhere they want to run. You can just dial a running play. They've been successful with it. Behind that front wall. Remember, they came in number one in the country, rushing 348 yards a game. And 
Obviously, with that 180 total, they're well more than half on their way to another outing like that. And here's a first down and then some for Lewis. They don't use him much on the ground. When they do, he usually produces. Lance Lewis, first down out to the 41. Yeah, he doesn't get many carries, but with the ability to hand it off quickly in the option, you see those linebackers just to lean out to the outside, and that's just going to run right by him, and the fullback is very effective when you can run the ball wide. Cordell Stewart warming up on the Colorado sideline. And will the Buffaloes make a change at quarterback when they get the ball? I don't think so. I think Coy uh, Dittner has done well enough. It's really not been his problem. They need to run the ball better, not change quarterbacks. Nebraska from the 41. Frazier on the option is going to keep it. And boy, did he get tagged by Chris Hudson, the free safety. I'll tell you. That's a down goes Frazier right there. Because <laughs> Hudson comes from the secondary. He's been blocked a few times, but you're going to see Frazier take it around the outside. And if he was a boxer on this one, you'd make the call. Go ahead, Brad, take it over. You're the real announcer. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. <laughs> this is a knockout blow coming from the secondary. And boom. <laughs> Chris Hudson, a sophomore out of Houston. One more look from one more angle, and it doesn't get any prettier for Tommy Frazier. Second and nine. Weaving his way up to the 47 is Derek Brown. Marcellus Elder, who was shaken up earlier in the game, back in there and made the tackle. And again, they start the third quarter as they started the first quarter with Derek Brown as the main man on the ground. And then when they go to Calvin Jones, he gives them a, a little something different. And he's got three touchdowns to show for it today. Yeah, Elder's back in. He hurt that uh, ankle a little bit in the first half. They must have used up all their tape and got him out there. Third down four. Frazier the other way. They had him hemmed in and he broke away. Senior and a freshman have a little chat at the end of the play, but it's the freshman that got the first down all the way to the 40-yard line. You talk about quick feet. This is quick feet. You look it up in the dictionary, you're going to see this run right here for a quarter. Remember, this kid was playing high school football last year. One, two, a skip there, a skip there. He's into the secondary, and he gets another handcuffed right there, but he powers through it. What a magnificent run on third down. Got 13 yards, his fourth run of 10 or more today on the option. This time he wants to throw. Complete to the 39-yard line. Vince Hawkins, the wing back. And it is Chris Hudson with another good hit defensively. Frazier, highly recruited, as Gary mentioned earlier, made his trip to Colorado, definitely liked it. Bill McCartney thought he was going to have this young man as a quarterback. And then Coy Detmer came into the picture. And Coy Detmer's father and Bill McCartney had a little chat. And he said, we want Coy going somewhere where we know he's not going to have another true freshman quarterback he'll have to face. With that in mind, Detmer committed. They called Tommy Frazier and said, Tommy, we're full up in Colorado. He ends up in Nebraska, and he's kind of been a nightmare for him today. Derek Brown. And Elder again wrapped him up as he got it to the 35-yard line. Now, if Nebraska takes this thing the length of the field to open up the third quarter and gets another touchdown, it is going to be a long way back, and I don't care how well you throw the football. Uh, I just took the words right out of my mouth. I think this is a key drive in this football game. They go to behind 31-7. to seven. You're going to see a two-minute drill the rest of the game right. because that's a lot of points to go against Nebraska's defense, especially the trouble they've had pass protecting from the outside. And of course, that Colorado group right there defensively been on the field a long time today. Here's another key third down. Frazier rolls and delivers, and it's incomplete. Broken up at the 29-yard line, intended for Tremaine Bell, and Ronnie Bradford out there, along with Dion Figures, make the hit. Problem with that type of a pass is both the defensive backs and everybody in the stands knew the receivers were going to go just past the first down area and try to pick up the first down. So did Bradford. He played it as a first down type pass. He was right there, and he was covered pretty well. Mike Stiggy has punted extremely well today. There's his numbers. This time they won't ask him to blast one that long, but rather to put one inside the 10-yard line somewhere, which is where Deion figures awaits. Mike 
and Stiggy celebrating his 23rd birthday today. As we look behind him on the kick. Heads it toward the sideline. What a great birthday present he just gave himself. Out at the two. That's where the Buffaloes will have it when we come back. ESPN's presentation of CFA College Football is brought to you by Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Nothing beats a Bud. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Dr. Jerry Punch with you for Nebraska's 82nd homecoming. So far, a good one for them with a 24-7 lead. And Colorado is, has been the story the whole game with horrible field position, courtesy this time of a sticky punt again. Yeah, you remember they had one early in the game and they downed it on the two-foot line. And watch this one go out like it had eyes. Great kicking job by that young man. Not young anymore, 23 years old. Time to get done punting, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe punting somewhere, right? Jim Hansen being helped off the field. The all big eight offensive lineman for Colorado. Yeah, senior goes off and a redshirt freshman, Chad Hammond, goes in. And he has to face the likes of Travis Hill. Great job, huh? Second and six. Warren run out of bounds. And I mean run out of bounds. Carmer and Bird are over there. They have to feel a little bit for Lamont Warren. He's having a tough enough time getting it going on the ground. And as soon as he took that handoff, somebody chunked an orange from way up there in the first deck and almost hit him with it. Yeah, he's a 10 6 100 meter sprinter, but he's having a tough time getting to the line of scrimmage so Boy. far in this football game. Four yards on seven carries for Lamont Warren. Yeah, the longest rushing yard game so far was by Coy Detmer. Detmer may be running for his life here again. Third and three. One hopped it intended for Westbrook, incomplete. Officially, he's only been sacked a couple of times, but when you count the knockdowns in the hurries, it's been a long day for Coy Detmer. This time they try to get him out of the pocket and take some of the pressure off a young offensive line against these two outstanding linebackers. But it's going to be Hill again right in his face. When you're trying to throw a ball 20 yards downfield with a linebacker in your face, that's extremely difficult. Well, Mitch Berger can air one out if he can get it off. Nine men on the line of scrimmage. Dual return men and Dixon and Hughes back for the Cornhuskers. Line drive kick should be returnable for Hughes from the 46. To the 44 of Colorado with 9.08 to go third quarter and Nebraska in command. That big eight game Thursday. This one is 24-7 Nebraska with 9.08 to go in the third quarter. And again, Nebraska with excellent field position. Derek Brown. Got a couple. Shannon Clavel, the nose man, and Beekert again helping out on the tackle. You know, you want to say when you're watching this game, is Nebraska getting too conservative running the ball here? Well, that's what they do best. Right. I mean, they're just eating up the yards, and I don't see anything wrong with running that ball between the tackles. They've had great success with it. At this stage, they just don't want mistakes. They were fifth in the country in turnover ratio coming in on the positive side, while Colorado's way on the short end of college football in that category. And Brown trying to break the tackle of Beekert and Kantz. The story of this one, well, it opened up with a touchdown early for Nebraska after a Detmer interception. And no rushing at all for Colorado to go with those three turnovers, that interception included. And Calvin Jones, three touchdowns out of 70 yards. And he and Derek Brown have been quite a tandem in the backfield for Tom Osborne today. Third down and nine. Now let's see if they do put it in the air. Tommy Frazier is going to call a timeout. 
Good move. Very aware for a young quarterback. The 24 sec, 25 second clock was down to one. He knew he couldn't get the playoff. Why make a big mistake? Well, Tommy Frazier talks with Tom Osborne. and will take a break and be back right after this. Tommy Frazier, having called the timeout, brings up his Cornhuskers with a third and nine. At the Colorado 42-yard line. They fake the counter. Frazier wants to throw. Man open, and he dropped it. Willie Washington, the tight end. Well executed until the end of the play. <laughs> you can't get any more open than that. I, when I first watched the play up here, I thought it was a run all the way, and I think so did Colorado. Free safety Davis bites on it. He's got Washington wide open, but watch his feet go out from under him while, while he tries to stop and catch this ball. He doesn't even touch it. <laughs> you see it right here. He's going to try to stop and catch this ball. His feet's going to go out from under him. And Washington doesn't even touch the ball or slow it down on that play. Well, time for Mike Stiggy again. Two inside the five today. This one just barely made the end zone. We talked about turnovers and how they can be key to these two teams. You talk about opposite ends of the spectrum. Colorado came in 104th out of 107 Division I A schools, and they've added to that minus 11. <laughs> Minus 14 turnover ratio and look at Nebraska fifth the uh, seventh best in the country at plus 11. Yeah, they've been dodging bullets with those turnovers all year only tying one football game, but it's bound to catch up with you and it is looks like it is today so far. Here's the freshman back out there Detmer first and 10 Colorado. The blitz on him again and he's intercepted. Anderson and now it's minus 15. Mike Anderson does a beautiful job here of again reading Detmer's eyes. He's freed up on this play. He looks at Warren the tailback when he blocks. He's going to just read his eyes and he gets into the zone makes the interception a real nice catch. First and ten for Nebraska. And they turned turnovers into points before today, and they already have a 24-7 lead. Frazier on the keep. Thought about a pitch at the late stage of that option and thought the better of it. Chad Brown ran him down, number 34. Seven minutes and ten seconds remaining third quarter. The Cornhuskers leading the Buffaloes, 24-7, key game in the Big Eight. Remember, Kansas coming up for both these teams in the upcoming weeks. And Kansas right now on top of the Big 8. They were leading at last report. And if they win, would go to 4-0. Nebraska trying to remain perfect in the conference at 3-0. Second down and five. They bring the option the other way. And again, Frazier shows his speed, but so did Greg Beaker, who made the tackle. One more look at that interception. This is Mike Anderson right here in the middle. You see, no backs back here, so he's allowed to just drop back and play Detmer's eyes. He's going to watch and watch and watch and watch him break to the ball before it's really even thrown, and that's what's key. The pressure up front, no running back to hold him in there, and he just drops back into his own drop and makes the pickoff. I really think that's the second interception that Corey's thrown where he hasn't looked off as a throwing quarterback, and you have to do that. Even with that little 5 o'clock shadow, you can tell he's a 19-year-old <laughs> true freshman. Here's another third down, Nebraska. Frazier does pitch this time, and it's good for a first down. Ball loose at the end of the play. Nebraska still has it. Vincent Hawkins, a wingback, fell on a ball that seemed to lie there forever. I think Colorado thought it had been blown dead or whatever the case, but now the case is first and goal, Cornhuskers. This time on the option, Fraser's going to step back and come down an option right here to Brown. There's no fake, but he gets one-on-one -on -one to the end of the line of scrimmage, and when he gets pressured, 
just makes the easy pitch from the linebacker, and there's the space that Brown has to run. And you're right about this. At the end of the play, Colorado stops. There's no whistle. That ball's free, and Nebraska comes up with it. Vincent Hawkins, number 38, will be the last guy to come into your picture and come up with a fumble recovery. What it does is give the Cornhuskers first and goal. The fullback, Lance Lewis, about a yard, and that's all. And all day long, the Colorado defense has been down here inside their own five-yard line facing Tom Osborne's big offensive line and running backs. Well, how about that score? 41-7. to seven. Washington all over Stanford today. We'll look at some of the other finals. And games still in progress. Big ones still going on around the country. Second and goal at the three, Nebraska. Up 24 to seven and trying to add to it. Here comes the option again out there. To the left side. And then Frazier gets collared and dropped. Brian Diet, the junior. Defensive end made the hit. You know, Colorado's defense was looking at options in spring ball for years. Now they're looking at passes, and the option game has given them trouble so far in this game. Diet does a nice job that time of getting in on that play, but they had pursuit coming all the way down. Beaker was also there. Well, here's another big third down situation for both the Colorado defense and the Nebraska offense about five and a half yards away from the Buffalo's end zone. I think Nebraska has anything like a quarterback draw right here because if they do, I, I would bet they dial it. They'll fill up that backfield with Hawkins, the wing back in there. Now the motion man out is Brown. Frazier throws. Touchdown. Gerald Armstrong, the tight end. Another Nebraska touchdown. It was off the bootleg action, giving Frazier two options here, either to run or to pull up and throw this ball. And Frazier's so calm. Remember, just a true freshman running an offense with his feet, and now finally with the arm. Extra point. Makes it 31 to 7. Three minutes and 58 seconds to go, third quarter. Gerald Armstrong, four catches on the year, and then go to the right, four touchdowns on the year. <laughs> How does that have to feel? I mean, that's a young man who walked on here at Nebraska catching a pass, a big touchdown pass in a huge game like this. Homecoming 92 has been everything Nebraska had hoped for. It appears we're going to see Cordell Stewart. <laughs> 26 yards, six plays was the drive. 328 the time. There's the man that... Had it in the end zone. Don't forget the top-ranked team in the country is yet to come. You know the Mountaineers are not going to be in the greatest of moods over the last couple of weeks. They've had some close games, some games that Don Nalen has questioned the officiating in, and now they take on the number one team in the country. That should be a dandy later. Bennett to kick. Mitchell trying to run it down. It goes out of the end zone. And here comes Cordell Stewart. Well, I'm sure he's going to enjoy playing, but looking up at the <laughs> clock at 31 to 7. I, I was going to say, this would not be the spot I'd want to get my hands on the ball again. This is when you run on the field and you say, Coach, you want me to tie it or win this thing? signals ball loose whistle dead at the line of scrimmage Travis Hill has been all over the place close to that one again Hill has had a marvelous game a senior out of Pearland Texas 6'2 240 Butkus candidate 
What a game he's had. He's got an interception already today and a fumble recovery and raised a little havoc in the Colorado backfield that time. Stewart. Here comes Hill again. Perella and Alberts with the sack. It's been overwhelming. The front seven for Nebraska, they've been using a dime front, and they have been putting pressure the whole game on the quarterback. Cordell Stewart, Coy Detmer, Steve Young, Randall Cunningham, it's not going to matter. If you bring people like this from the outside, these two linebackers, Alberts and Hill, have just been dynamic. I mean, it's like having, you know, two sprinters coming around that corner, keeping them in the pocket. And then with Big Perella cleaning up, You've really got a group to reckon with. Third and 20. Stewart, deep ball. Tipped. Kenny Wilhite got his hands on it. Donnell Leomiti was the intended receiver. Yeah, I don't even think that play counted. I think they blew that whistle before the play started. Nebraska has sacked, knocked down, hurried, blocked, and picked off Colorado quarterbacks all day long. Yeah, that, that's enough for a season, let alone a football game like this, especially when you're on national television. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, repeat the third down. They'll get another shot at it. Now it'll only be third and 15. Yeah, that's a lot better. <laughs> Just keep your eyes on the two outside men, 34 and 93. They've been playing havoc. Stewart got rid of it. Penalty markers down, 34 and 93. We're back there again. That time it was Alberts who came from the backside to hit Stewart, and he was being held on the play, as you can see the signal. The whole time he's rushing. The offensive tackle was holding the best he could, but he couldn't keep him out of there. You know, it's a bad sign, Brad, when your offensive line is holding and you're still getting That's pressure right. from the backside. You're going to see Cordell Stewart get hit just as he lets this ball go. That's why it was a one-hopper. Mitch Berger from his own end zone again. Tyrone Hughes, the senior out of New Orleans, has done a nice job returning punts for Nebraska this afternoon. Another nice kick under pressure. Hughes from the 37. Good coverage downfield as well. No return after a 48-yard punt. Two minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Colorado on the short end, 31 to 7. Kind of look at this Nebraska offense. It gets a lot of criticism around the country right now because they just run the ball. But you know, like that old tie you have in the closet, it comes back in fashion. <laughs> I think this is going to be the offense of the future because you have to be able to run the ball. I got a couple of ties I know will never make it back. <laughs> Brazier for the first man, Lewis, the fullback, to cross the 40 to the 41. Everyone knows you, you have to throw the ball to move it in modern college football, but you also have to be able to run the ball a little bit, and that's what Colorado is being exposed today is they have no rushing attack. They put this offense in this year, and they're not ready for a defense like this. Bill McCartney, who made the drastic offensive change. Yeah, and he knew this year would be a transition year. He's looking for the long run. He's got a young football team. He's looking for 1993 and 94. Yeah, he says we're only about halfway there in our offense. On a second and six, the toss to Brown. That's a tough run. Brown got it near the 45-yard line. Chris Hudson, number 47, again from his safety spot, made the tackle. As we wind our way down, closing up the third quarter, 1.30 left. I tell you, you give Will Shields the ball one time, he starts running like a back. Watch him come around. This man weighs 300 pounds. Right guard, he's going to sprint around the outside. And when he gets up on a linebacker there, he keeps pushing him out of the picture. What an offensive guard. 
I can see why Coach McCartney said, I'd like to have him on my team. Senior out of Lawton, Oklahoma, 305 pounder. Here's the give to the first man, Lewis, the fullback again. First down at midfield. Neon figures made the stop. But Lance Lewis, who doesn't get a lot of publicity because of Calvin Jones and Derek Brown, has a first down, Nebraska. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim. Brad, how's number two and trying harder? Well, let me show you. Billy Joe Hobart comes into the game, runs a little option. Look at him go. Stanford is getting walloped 41 to 7, and you know Miami knows the score. You'll see them later against West Virginia. How would you like to have Don James quarterback problems, huh? How would you like to be on West Virginia right now, knowing that? Forget too. about it. <laughs> Derek Brown. There's nine more yards before Chad Brown can make the hit. Derek Brown's only 185 pounder, but he plays bigger than that. I'll tell you, Nebraska has controlled this game with their front people all game, and it's not going to end the rest of this rest of this football game. Their offensive line, their fullback that time, Lewis comes in and fits on somebody, and with these backs slashing up in there and gaining confidence with every run, you're going to see it for the rest of the game. 75 yards on the ground for Derrick Brown now. So both Jones and Brown over 70 yards rushing. Second. And just a yard to go, and Brown will try to do it again, and he has the first down to the 34. Darius Holland, the nose tackle, made the stop, but not before Brown has a first down to end the third quarter. This time is Jim Scott. He's only 265 pounds, but he manhandles... Bell, and they just turn it up there for more positive yards. And at the end of three, Nebraska manhandling Colorado. 31-7. Nestler Gary Danielson and a frozen Dr. Jerry Punch. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska with a Cornhuskers lead heading into the fourth quarter, 31 to 7. Here's Lance Lewis, the fullback. He's going to score. a carry. We told he doesn't see it often, but when he does, he makes it count. 34 yards, touchdown. Lewis is like a Tom Rathman, a guy you never heard of, but he's going to be a player on Sunday, one of these guys. In high school, listen to this, he won the state 100, 200, and the shot put. Nice combination. That sounds like a fullback <laughs> to me. It has not been a pleasant day for Bill McCartney. Extra point, Byron Bennett up and in. It's 38 to seven, Nebraska. Colorado safeties were cheated up and wide looking for the option, and when they split it up front right here with this great offensive line blocking, this man is gone. Lance Lewis, number 26, you're not going to catch him. If that doesn't look reminiscent of a Tom Rathman, I don't know what does. It's one of those backs here at Nebraska where they just kind of get blended in because they don't get a lot of opportunities. He also has good hands. He won the Big 8 Shot Book Championship kind of as a hobby this year, too. Just goofing around. You and I were talking during the break, Gary, about the fact that Nebraska, depending on how many times they get the ball remaining in this game, might have three guys go over 100 yards rushing. Lewis just jumped in the picture. You never know how many guys right. they'll have. Frazier's got 86, Brown 81, and Jones 70. All of a sudden, you give it to the fullback, and he gashes you for a touchdown. Oh, yeah, and Will Shields has oh, yeah. uh, seven <laughs> yards on one carry. Yeah, and, and put a lot of those yards right in front of him, too, because he is really blocking in this football game. Well, the folks are having some kind of fun at homecoming. They've never lost on Halloween, and they're certainly well on their way to keeping that record intact. 38-7, one play into the fourth quarter. And Colorado about ready to get it back on offense. And this time a year ago, they could do virtually nothing against Nebraska in the fourth quarter. They were held to a season low of 140 total yards, and they're well under that right now. So if this is but if this is Colorado's big rivalry, <laughs> the rivals getting the better of it today. Eric Mitchell will down it. And Colorado will have to work from its own 20-yard line again. 
Michigan and Northwestern. That's where Gary and I'll be next week. Number three team in the country uh, against Northwestern. And then it'll be Kansas, the top team of the Big Eight, against the team chasing them now, Nebraska, 7.30. And the road to the Orange Bowl will continue right here on ESPN. Kansas, by the way, has won their game, so they're 4-0 in the Big Eight. Stewart, down he goes, it's Perella again. And Alberts is there, too. Yeah, that's a nice play Nebraska has on defense, and I'm going to call it a play now because we've seen it about 25 times. The two wide linebackers come, pinch it, and inside Perella cleans it up. I'll tell you, this Alberts, number 34, is some kind of a football player. Look him go around the tight corner, leads it up inside, and you're looking at a 290-pounder who Coach Charlie McBride said is one of the three best defensive tackles that have ever played at Nebraska. And the guy that helped him, number 34, a linebacker who runs under 4-7. He showed that kind of speed today. Pass complete out near the 18-yard line. Westbrook uh, make it Ray Carruth, rather, with the catch. Bruce Moore with a tackle. You know, you wonder, a team like Missouri tosses up 424 yards passing a week ago. You come into a game like this, and Colorado looks like they just can't get it back to the line of scrimmage. Stewart got hammered as he let go of the ball. Guess who? Trev, Trev Alberts. <laughs> we'll say it in stereo because this guy is some linebacker. Speech communications major, I'd imagine he's talked to both Stewart and Detmer today yeah. in that backfield. I'll tell you, even if he can't speak at all, he runs a <laughs> 4 6 8 40, a 37-inch vertical jump, and for a tackle, that is tough to handle a man like that coming around the corner. Tremendous job on defense by Nebraska today, forcing again a Mitch Berger punt. Nice kick, Hughes at the 35. And Hughes in the open field. The putter to beat, and he's beaten it. Flags down as Hughes goes all the way to the five. But penalty markers back at midfield. I'll tell you, Baron Miles had a tough play on this one. First he rushes the punter and gets a Mouthful of helmet, and then when he comes back, he ends up clipping or blocking from behind. <laughs> and it's going to negate a 60 yard punt return when they bring it back. Pushing the back on the return, 10 yard penalty. First down. Tyrone Hughes showing his punt return capability. Yeah, coming from behind, it was Baron Miles, number 14, who got it, but Hughes really showed on this play that he has the speed to take it all the way on any punt. Last year, he was a wide receiver, then broke his wrist, and they switched him to defensive back. Today, he's played a little bit of both, and that doesn't even count the return game. Great run to watch again, even though they brought it all the way back to the 40 with the illegal block. Jones to the 43 as we go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc. Guys, it began 31 years ago with a win over Colorado. What's that? We're talking about sellouts here at Memorial Stadium. 73,650. And folks, today, the 188th consecutive sellout. And believe me, these people here are not fair weather fans. They will sit here and enjoy every minute of tonight's ball game. I up there. Tell you what, you gotta love it because those are the weather conditions we've been dealing with since this game kicked off. Andre McDuffie checks in. The fullback spot for Nebraska. Frazier, the keeper, on the option. Tripped up short of the first down by about a yard. And now we'll keep a close eye on the rushing totals of Frazier and Brown and Jones and whoever might be in there. The standings in the Big Eight, we showed you what it looked like coming in. Kansas has won the Jayhawks with a brilliant season so far. A winner today, so they're 4-0. They're atop the heap. Nebraska on its way to a 3-0 match, 3-0 record, and the matchup with Kansas only a week away. 
you will see it right here next week. Looks to be a first down for Calvin Jones. Wayne Davis made the tackle, but Calvin Jones with three touchdowns on the day has a first down here. How about Kansas and Nebraska next Saturday night? Is that going to be a beauty? I tell you, if Kansas can stop this running game, I got to take my hat off to them because this is a powerful running game as I've ever seen. And I've watched Michigan play a few times, but they've got two tailbacks as good as anyone playing college football. The one in there now is Calvin Jones. They fake an end around, and Frazier goes deep. Man, wide open. Corey Dixon, number two, all the way inside the two. 48 yards, and that's what you can do when you can run it so well. Yeah, you got it exactly right. First they fake it to Jones, then they fake the reverse, and uh-oh, there's a guy going to be about 25 yards in the open, and Frazier puts it right on it. Easy catch for Dixon, and this is an offense that is running on all cylinders right now. Corey Dixon, a singer in a band. They've got to deal with Motown. I'm telling you what, he's singing on the sidelines after that one. And now it's first and goal, Nebraska. The throw to the end zone. And now both Nebraska tight ends have a touchdown. William Washington, the senior out of Tyler, Texas, has this one. Colorado sells out this time, bringing everybody to stop the run. I mean, who's going to think you're going to pass on first and goal? But this is 1990 football. And I'll tell you, I've been impressed with what I've seen with Tom Osborne today. He's pulled out all the stops. He's faked field goals. He's thrown on first and goal in close. And now he's got 40. Four points to show for it. Excuse me, 45 points to show for it with 11.23 to go in the game. Upon learning, Little Caesars is offering two pizzas for $5.99. The mind enters five... The most comfortable jeans known to man. 45 to 7, Nebraska. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Dr. Jerry Punch in, quite frankly, what is sort of a shocker here. In Lincoln, Nebraska. This game was supposed to be right, close. Right when you are. A little indecision on the kick return. And what a shot put on at the end of that one. Toby Wright with a big tackle, and Gray was there too. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Doc? No stranger at all from the Nebraska Cornhusker faithful. Neil Smith, 87 All-American as a defensive tackle. Neil coming home. you got to get an open week at Kansas City. You've got to believe that this uh, reminds you a little bit of the defense that you played on here. Yeah, it is. I tell you, Nebraska defense is really aggressive today. I think that um, they're flying around the football and they're making things happen. And um, I, I was in a, um, the uh, locker room before this time, and, and Coach Osborne said he stretched for to get four turnovers, and they did just that. Neil Smith, will go back there for the play and come back down this moment. Look, Brad? From the 20. Cordell Stewart overshoots Westbrook, and we'll go back down to Jarrett. Go ahead, Jerry. And Neil, back with us. There's some noise here. It's hard to hear. Neil, you guys 4-4 four four at Kansas City. One game out behind Denver, uh, playing extremely well. Yeah, I think we, are, we only had one bad game. I think that uh, we had last week against Pittsburgh, but we have been uh, been in every one of our games. You know, um, I just think that you know, the four games we lost have been on the road, and it's been tough for us in that situation. But we're at home. We've been playing real well. The former All-American and now All-Pro, Neil Smith. All right. right. Jerry, tell Neil that we'll trade him an ESPN cap for that Kansas City rhinestone thing he's got happening. Stewart on second and ten, and he's hit as he threw again. That's been the story for the Colorado quarterbacks all day. I tell you, if uh, Bill McCartney doesn't find some running plays with these incomplete passes, this score could get up into the 60s because they are not going to stop this offense any longer, even if they put in the backups. Look at that Florida-Georgia score. How big is that one with four minutes left in the Gator Bowl? And here, there's not a doubt with 11.08 to go. And Colorado with 106 yards of total offense. That's it. Minus 17 yards rushing. 
incomplete. Pass intended for Lamont Warren. He's probably lucky he didn't catch it. And David Noonan gives Cordell Stewart a little tap as if to say, hey, man, we know it's a long day. That was Nebraska's second dime defense. There wasn't a starter on the field. Eight punts for Mitch Berger tells a story in itself. Tyrone Hughes went 60 yards before a penalty negated his last return. He's back there with Corey Dixon. Somebody will have to field this on the hop. It's Hughes. Ten minutes and 53 seconds to go, and it's all Cornhuskers. 45-7. Nebraska wanting to get to the Orange Bowl, where Miami will be playing later, and the new quarterback for the Cornhuskers, Mike Grant, who started the season. And Tommy Frazier took his spot. He did play one series last week. He's been fighting some back spasms, and he's in there because this one's out of, out of touch. Frazier did a nice job, the true freshman, while he was in there as he threw two late scoring tosses to his tight ends. And now Nebraska doing what it does best. We'll keep it on the ground and try to just ice it away. Let's go back to Jerry Punch. Brad, I got an answer to your question. First of all, Neil Smith made that hat he's wearing, that Kansas City hat. Actually, he didn't make the hat. He put the rhinestones on it. He said, yeah, I will gladly trade that hat for an ESPN hat. I'd love to have an ESPN hat, so it's a deal. You give me the hat, and we'll have Brad send you the ESPN hat. How's that? Sounds good to me. All, all right, right, Neil. We got a deal. Hey, Thanks. there we go. How about that, guys? I like it. <laughs> Neil Smith, some kind of player. One of the best that ever played in his red uniform defensively. Here's McDuffie, the other fullback. Andre McDuffie out to the 49-yard line. We go out to our studio in Tim Brando. Brad, with just under five minutes left, three-play drive. He hits Hastings, he hits Hurst, and here Eric Zier hits Brian Bohannon. 24 yards, 26-24, four minutes left. Dog defense has to hunker down now. No hunkering down necessary here for Nebraska with a 45-7 lead and 10 minutes left in the ballgame. Grant wants to throw. Incomplete intended for Jermaine Bell. Don't forget, more action coming up. As first, we'll bring you the residents in college scoreboard show. All the scores and highlights from today's action, and then the Mountaineers in the Orange Bowl against the number one team in the country. Coy Detmer will have better days, you can bet. Today wasn't what he had planned, that's for sure. Three interceptions and only 119 yards on the afternoon. Second down and 10, Nebraska. Jones. 14 more yards. Chris Hudson knocked him out of bounds. These two guys are fun to watch out of the backfield. That's 93 yards now on the day for Jones. Takes Jones about a half a step to get the full speed catching that ball. You should look at Derek Brown, number 21, right there. The other half of the wee backs. And, you know, I've seen a lot of tandems. Washington's got a couple guys. Michigan has three of them. And I don't know if you have two better tailbacks like this on one team. Big eight newcomer of the year last season, Calvin Jones. Here he comes again to the 35-yard line. Picked up a couple more. He set a Nebraska freshman record last year with 900 yards on the ground. One of the more sought-after high school players. In fact, a lot of people will tell you the most sought-after high school running back to come out of the state of Nebraska since Gail Sayers back in 61. And they came out of the same hometown. First man, McDuffie, the fullback, to the 30-yard line. Well, there's no real secret. You know, there's been criticism in this program of Tom Osborne not being able to win big games against top 10 teams. There you see his record, 15 and 30. That's a fact. You can't look at it. But this program is solid. And I think with this running attack he has labeled there and his new freshman quarterback, Tommy Frazier, he has as many weapons as I've ever seen for a Nebraska team. 
They had not beaten a top 10 team since 1988. That one's going out the window today. Third and three. Jones drags a couple of people with him. Wayne Davis, a strong safety, does hold on to make the stop. He's a little bit short of the first down. And he's, Jones that is, a little bit short of 100 yards on the ground. Well, you have to be able to run the ball and be balanced, I think, to win in any league. But in the Big Eight, the last 46 years, Brad, no team has won the Big, T Big Eight championship when they led the team in passing. In fact, in the last 46 years, 38 of the teams that finished first led the league in rushing. You look at the stats for Nebraska rushing 352 yards. And they've won 45 straight. This will be 46 when they have that many yards on the ground. It's fourth down and less than one. McDuffie's got the first down. Near the 20-yard line. Beekert and Brown, the two starting linebackers for Colorado, make the hit. They've made a lot of stops today, and they have been on the field a lot. <laughs> At this point in the game on defense, you can only kind of smile and say, you know, what are we going to do to stop these guys? They got S's underneath their jerseys because, you know, you have a good defense, you have a lot of pride, you have a returning defense as good as anyone in the country, but you can't even slow them down. You saw Beekert smiling there. This one you just have to forget before your next game. And Grant keeps it on the option. Ted Johnson defensively makes the tackle for Colorado. Well, that's what a lot of people question in the Big Eight. With the weather that they have late in the year, can you win it with a passing attack? Nebraska believes you have to be able to run the ball solidly. I think Bill McCartney believes that also. But at this point, his one-back running attack is not up to the standards that he needs to win in this conference. Well, Bill certainly knew there were going to be days like this and worse. Worse wind, more snow, all of that with a passing offense. Jones trying to reach that 100-yard mark. And that might put him right about there. Or awfully close to it. We're under seven minutes. It's 45 to 7 Cornhuskers. There's the situation. And a third down and four coming up. Virginia yet to come tonight here on ESPN. It'll be close to the first down. Penalty markers fly into the fray at the end of the play. Yeah. We're going to see that type of chippy play right now because you know Nebraska's doing a lot of talking. You know Colorado is very frustrated, and they're going to pick up a penalty right at the end of the game. It'll be on Chad Brown, I think, the late hit. Chad's your typical linebacker, too. For a hobby, he collects lizards and snakes. You know, he's not a guy you invite over for Thanksgiving or anything. <laughs> well, the penalty will make it a first down. Nebraska at the Colorado five-yard line. And now you start digging through the record books. If they put this in the end zone to go up 52-7, to win the last time. Nebraska routed Colorado like this. Schlesinger, the fullback, touchdown. They just keep coming at you. First string fullback, Schlesinger. Going to get this one and power it in. Remember, this is the guy who dropped the fake field goal earlier on the shovel pass. Well, I don't think it matters much right now, but, but they broke the half-century mark with a run towards the end of the game. Both hands around the football goalward and was not to be denied. Tom Sealer in for the point after. 6.05 to go in the ball game. Oh, what a homecoming. Sized Attorney General and Reaper.
6.05 left in a Nebraska route over Colorado. Sealer to punt. Eric Mitchell back. What a happy Halloween everyone will have in Lincoln in the next six minutes. Mitchell for the two. Got it out to the 35, maybe the 36-yard line before he's run out of bounds. This will not end our college football Saturday, that's for sure. Don't forget, number one Miami and the Mountaineers of West Virginia and Big East action set to square off a little bit later. Get a chance to look at Gino Toretta and the uh, high-powered passing game of Miami. The high-powered passing game of Colorado hasn't mattered today. No, it really has. they just been able to, haven't been able to handle the guys up front, and they need to run the ball here just to get this game over with. Good call, Gary. <laughs> and the run's successful. Hill breaks free, goes down to the 45-yard line. James Hill has the only touchdown today for the Buffaloes. And he rumbles his way into Colorado, uh, rather, to Nebraska territory before he's brought down. You know, James Hill was a fullback in last year's offense, but with a one-back, everyone has to play tailback. And they're just going to have to get better at a few more running plays, I think, in this offense to be successful for days like this. I mean, I think it can work, but I think you have to be able to run the ball in a one-back offense. First, first down of this half for Colorado. Nowhere to hide for Lamont Warren. Lamont Warren losing yardage today. Nearly every time he touches the football. Here we go again. Want to play quarterback? Mm. <laughs> 12 knockdowns. You're going to be sore the next day. That's just no way to run a pass offense. They're just getting manhandled from the outside in. Without a running attack, Charlie McBride has been able to pull the strings today. Charlie, a former Colorado Buffalo, graduated from Colorado and says it's always a little bit special because he's got so many friends back in Boulder. But he's been here a long time as defensive coordinator with Tom Osborne, and uh, I don't even think he could have dreamed his defense would come up with the kind of game they had today. Yeah, I got a chuckle. He said, I make my donations every year to the school. Yeah, I love my school. Right. Well, he made a donation today. <laughs> this is going to have a lasting impact on the Colorado program. <laughs> they want to get out of here. Under five minutes, 52-7 to seven, Nebraska. Pass is complete for a first down at the 34 as we go to Jerry Punch. Doc? Guys, the news goes from bad to worse for the Colorado Buffaloes. Their defensive right tackle, Brian Diet, 260-pounder, was carried off a moment ago in a cart. He apparently got a contusion, the left lower leg, a bruise. They thought it might be a fracture. They're going to take him in and get an X-ray. Boys, just not good news on this sideline. The good news is, Jerry, you're only 445 away from being able to warm up someplace. <laughs> Nasty weather day and a nasty day if you're cheering for Colorado. Rashad Salam, a kid that Bill McCartney has some high hopes for in the future, gets his first carry of the day. You know, uh, Jerry has to be here. He's getting paid. But there's 70,000 people. Nobody no moved. One, no one's leaving yeah. yet. It's raining, it's cold, and they're just standing. What do they want, more blood out of this game? They're <laughs> about to go 5-0 and oh at home. They're about to win their 24th straight homecoming game, and they're going to be perfect on Halloween. Can't ask for more than that. Not only perfect, but devastating today. 52 to 7. Stewart lost the handle on the quarterback draw. Did he get back on it? It's so academic at this moment. Doesn't matter. Nebraska has it. It, it matters if you're part of Colorado's defense because you got to run back out there and That's get true. to try to stop them again. <laughs> Penalty markers also on the field. Cordell Stewart with a bad left wrist and looking at the right wrist as if to say, we call that play? Uh, that's what he's saying. I, I wrote it right down right here. You said number three. I ran Holy number three. Offense. That's a quarterback draw. Drops back two steps. You see it's a planned quarterback draw. It's knocked right out of his hand. Boy, another turnover for Colorado. 
Tony Veland in the third quarterback of the day for Nebraska. Get a chance. He drops the first snap from center. You don't suppose that was a fumble ruski again? I man. hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that would really fall under pile it on. You know it. it. Residents in College Scoreboard Show will bring you up to date on all the big games from around the country and then West Virginia and the Hurricanes. There's Tony. Freshman out of Omaha. And again, the oranges start flying onto the turf here at Memorial City. Again, Kansas definitely has plans for Nebraska next week. And that's another game we'll have for you. And how big will that be? Beaker in on another tackle. He's put in a long day. Last year, Nebraska 9-2-1. The two losses were to Miami in the Orange Bowl and to Washington. They would like to get back there. When you lose to Miami and Washington as your only two losses, that's not a bad season at all. And, of course, their only loss this season also to the Huskies. And with oranges in mind, let's go down to Jerry Punch. Jerry? Now, at the beginning of the game, Brad, they were throwing oranges, thinking about the Orange Bowl, but hey, the way things have changed here, now they're throwing frozen concentrate. It has gotten cold down here. And by the way, I know Gary's going trick-or-treating, but Brad, I'm buying the hot chocolate when this one's over. You got a deal. Nebraska will have to punt. Nebraska has juiced Colorado today. We know that. 2-14, clock running. Mike Stiggy, who's punted about as well as you can possibly punt today, in the kick it away. And we got another beauty. Charles Johnson goes all the way back to the 20. Brings it back to the 31 with 154 left in the game. Stiggy came in, as we said, with the second best net of any putter in the country, and he's not going to hurt those statistics today. 55-yard kick again that time. Now you start wondering where Nebraska fits into the uh, hierarchy of college football. You know, you look at the top teams, the Miamis, the Washingtons, and Michigan had to work against your old club, uh, your alma mater today, to get their win. Nebraska's looked as dominating as anybody we've seen. Oh, absolutely, but I just don't know how Nebraska passes up teams that, you know, haven't lost a game over with one tie. That's their problem. Another Nebraska fumble recovery. Troy Branch has got this one. That kind of day. Let's go to Tim Brando. Tim. Brad, I've got a Heisman update for you, and the front runners had bad days. Marshall Falk, 18 carries for 60 yards, had an injured quad in the game, but they do win against Colorado State. Garrison Hurst, even worse day, 14 carries for 41 yards. Gators win at 26-24. What does all this mean? It means that Gino Toretta can step up against West Virginia tonight at 7.30. Back to you guys. Lee Corso has been saying that all season, hasn't he? Here's Nebraska on offense again as if they need it. Jeff McAvicka on the carry this time. And we are in the three-deep area of the running backs for Nebraska. Coy Detmer, the freshman who started this ball game. Brother Ty, I'm sure, watched this one. And... Uh, I didn't have too many bad days and a lot of great ones, and I think that young man probably will, too. Oh, absolutely. I, I think what you're going to look at, though, because he and Stewart are one year apart only, I still look for Denver to get Richard possibly next year because they would like to separate those two in ages. Dealing the third Nebraska quarterback. Brought down by Holland and Rogers, And we're down to a minute to play. The fans gearing up on the far side of the field. They don't want to just say this is a nice homecoming win. They'd like to go out there and show no, their appreciation. No, I think they're waiting in line to get in the game. Oh. <laughs> because he's put everyone else in. <laughs> At the 35, it's third down and 11, by the way. 3,000 more guys that want to go out there and run the ball behind that line. And Rick Berenger, the fourth quarterback, runs this one out. Now look at it. It's all these guys want the ball. And you want to be one of these Nebraska security people, huh? <laughs> With the orange caps on? I don't think so. 82nd homecoming game, 23 straight, about to go to 24 in a row in the next 31 seconds. 
all those people would like to have in the game, and they'd like them to put Will Shields back in the block for him, too. That's the way I'd want to go back in and run the ball for Nebraska. This is the worst losing margin for a Colorado team since a Nebraska 69-19 win back in 1983. It just figures, doesn't it? Colorado hadn't lost in their last 25 conference games. The last team to beat them, Nebraska in 88. The last time they've been peppered this hard, Nebraska 83. And now it's about to be 52 to 7 here in just a few moments. And I'm glad I'm not Jerry Bunch, and hopefully he's on the near side. He's <laughs> getting a little bit spooky down there on Halloween. Here they come. And that goal post will never last. Nebraska stays unbeaten in the Big 8. Final, Cornhuskers 52, Buffalo 7. For Jerry Punch and Gary Danielson, I'm Brad Nessler. Mayhem at Memorial Stadium. And we'll send it back to Chris Fowler. Chris? All right.